I want to talk a little bit about the bear case. I know we talk all the time about how exciting everything is. And it's great on chain action. The Bitcoin ETFs are coming and all these other cool things are happening on chain and layer twos are taking off and it's all great. What if we're all wrong? What if it all goes to zero? Well, it's not going to go to zero, but there's still a lot of opinion that we could still get that recession in the USA. Now, maybe it's going to be a soft recession. It's not the soft landing, but a, a mild recession. The bear case in this scenario is that the recession comes in, equities correct, crypto potentially corrects even more. And that leads us into, again, all these things coming together where we have the Bitcoin having in April next year, where we have the Bitcoin ETFs potentially approved, what, in February next year, something like that. This all comes together to create a massively bullish picture. We have a little recession, maybe it's the baby recession, not a new Great Depression, it's the baby recession. That finishes, markets come out of that, everyone dusts themselves off, and we get mega bullish. And, and the funny thing is, the people think about, well, recession, oh, it's going to be the worst thing ever. And look, if a recession comes, I don't really care. We're going to talk about it because it's interesting to talk about. And of course, we should know what's going on in the markets as investors. And unless it is a new Great Depression and the dollar goes to zero, USA goes to zero, Bitcoin goes to zero, everything goes to zero everything then we're probably going to be okay and it, like all the recessions will end and markets will recover money will be made and we'll continue on the thing about bear markets thing about recessions that a lot of people tend to maybe forget or lose sight of in the moment when they're living through it is that they all end some are shorter some are longer that's all it comes down to and I take a long-term thesis on many of my investments. And look, I'm, you know, I know there's times to get in, times to get out. You got to play smart. But there are some investments I'm planning on holding for a very long time. And I don't really care what happens over the next three, four, five, six months. It's not a big deal. I'm more interested what's going to happen two years from now. It's going to happen five years, 10 years from now. A lot of people can't even think that far ahead. In the TikTok culture of... If it's not in a nine second video, I can't comprehend it. If I can't get rich in nine seconds, that's not even worth my time. Long-term thinking has tend to paid off absolutely the best. So Credit Suisse, the big banks, they are saying recession is coming and stocks may have topped out. Maybe, maybe. Of course, we've seen stock markets correcting a little bit this week. Uh, Credit Suisse, can we trust them or not? Hard to say. A lot of banks have different opinions. Bank of America, they have a different opinion. For example, Bank of America now expecting a soft landing instead of recession. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Now over in the Money Mastery newsletter, the moneymastery.io. <clears throat> moneymastery.io. Uh, we broke down this weekend our, news, our tech stock investing newsletter. What exactly is going on here? So... Wall Street analysts sounding the alarm. The market has been exceeding expectations, has been gaining 18% since January. However, these Lamborghinis might have to wait. Four prominent names in the financial industry are sounding the alarm that we might be heading into a bubble. So JP Morgan, the bank's top quant, uh, is warning that the AI hype is creating a stock bubble. You know that having 25% of the S&P 500 index concentrated in the top seven firms is a strong indicator of an impending doom and gloom scenario. That's one analyst at JP Morgan. Alternatively, JP Morgan, as an institution, is saying, actually, no. Actually, no, there's not going to be a recession. So who do you believe? The analyst at the company or the company's official statements? Again, is it all psyops? We covered the other day. JP Morgan said there's not going to be a recession anymore. Don't worry, everything's great. Are they lying to us? We know JP Morgan has a history of lying to us. He can't trust almost anything they say, except they know that we can't trust anything we can say. So sometimes they're going to say things that we think that they're lying about, but they're not actually lying, but it's all psyops. I don't know, but it's worth considering regardless. Wells Fargo, global market strategist, Scott Wren, still wary of an inflation rebound due to economic pressures. And we do have that concern to be thinking about this week as the inflation data is coming out. Pressures like a strong labor market, for example, could continue to cause headwinds here. He believes that sectors behind the rally are vulnerable to pullbacks. On the brighter side, he expects the S&P 500 to end the year at 46 to 4,800, which is above present levels. 
So let's pay attention to short term pullback. This guy's seeing BlackRock, largest asset manager in the world, predicting a roller coaster for inflation and is expecting volatility. We love volatility, though. Volatility is great. Volatility is where money is made. High inflation would raise the cost of operation, which could slash margins for many companies. At the same time, lower inflation also means lower prices for products and services, which also hurts profits. Rosenberg Research head David Rosenberg, not optimistic about the current rally, described it as a FOMO-based rally. In short, buy big green candles and get shanked by big red ones. Mm -hmm. So look, this is always the case, right? We have lots of people on one side saying everything's going to be bad and people on the other side saying, well, actually, no recession. Stocks are hitting all-time highs. Everything's going to be great. Who do you trust? I don't know. But this is all short-term stuff. Everything we just talked about, all these people, these are shorter-term things. If the recession comes, if stocks crash, et cetera, et cetera, we're not going into a new Great Depression, I hope, obviously. But that means that, okay, over the next few months, maybe, yeah, things get a bit dicey, whatever. Big deal. As long as you're not all leveraged up and wait for the market to tell you where it's going. Right? Be patient. Wait for a trend to establish itself accumulate during the accumulation period, et cetera, et cetera. Not financial advice, of course. Uh, Goldman Sachs right now, by the way, talking about inflation. Inflation could be going back up. This is kind of something that's definitely worrying the markets right now. So expectations for the U.S. CPI print on Thursday. Uh, Goldman Sachs saying it's going to be lower than the consensus view right now. That's their opinion. However, however, the consensus view of this is that inflation is actually going to be going back up. Um, where is it at here? Yeah, right. So we're going to be going up to 3.17%. So that means uh, we're going to have a slight increase in inflation from June to July. That's problematic because inflation has been basically nonstop trending down for a very long time here. And if we see, if inflation starts trending back up, Watch out for a negative reaction from markets. Markets are probably not going to like that. Markets might start freaking out. You're going to see all these opinions coming out. Inflation's going back to 9%. In fact, new highs for inflation coming soon to a market near you. Crash it all. Everything going back to zero again. You guys know how the emotional roller coaster of the market plays out. Right now, inflation has been coming down for a very long time. Even if it goes back up to 3.2%, it's really not a big deal. Remember, the Fed even said that they'd be kind of happy with 3%. No, they said that like a year ago. Now they're saying, well, it's got to be 2% or, or we're just going to have to keep raising rates forever. So if it is 3.2%, then the expectation for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates again at their next meeting becomes even higher. All things to keep an eye out here for with the market. But really, what the Fed should be doing is just watching Reddit message boards. This is, I thought this was a funny one I wanted to share with you. Hedge fund billionaire Dan Loeb says, monitoring Reddit message boards is now more important than fundamental analysis. I love it. Hedge fund billionaire uh, laments the victory of meme stocks. Fundamental analysis increasingly taking a backseat, monitoring daily option expiries and Reddit message boards. Of course, we've seen things like Tupperware. Tupperware went crazy. Tupperware is up like 800% or something in the last month or two wild stuff. Meme stocks continue to go insane and to wreck hedge funds. And of course, now hedge funds are pretty paranoid and are watching this kind of stuff because they want to make sure to get out of any short positions because all I guess all these guys do is just short, shorten all day long. People like some of those companies and they pump them like crazy. And of course, the Wall Street bets uh, story around GameStop and stuff. What a story. What a great story that was. And now They've got the hedge fund billionaires scared, which I think is hilarious. Now, of course, if we do get a bearish scenario for stocks, probably not the best scenario for our crypto coins either. As Mike McGlone points out, Bitcoin is riskier now versus the Dow than when the price of crypto first matched the index back in uh, Q1 of 2021, which may have bearish crypto implications. He said, my concern is that the stock market may face a normal recession-related decline. Nothing too dramatic, right? Normal. normal. But what's that mean for Bitcoin? Potentially nothing good. Short-term. Short-term. So we'll see how that plays out. 
Now, of course, we have the deadlines for the Bitcoin ETFs coming up as well. What implication does that have for the markets? If we get denials, actual denials, I'm not talking about delays. I would say we should expect delays and we're probably going to get delays announced and then the market's going to have a temporary like dump because people throw, oh, no, they're delaying the Bitcoin ETF. I better sell my Bitcoin now before it gets approved in six months. Okay. But if we get denials, that could definitely take the wind out of the sails of this entire narrative. Even one denial will be like, oh, well, if ARC gets denied. Is BlackRock really going to get approved? If Grayscale loses their lawsuit, which people are in favor of them winning right now, the odds favor Grayscale to win that suit. But if they lose their lawsuit, again, this could take the wind out of the sails of the entire spot Bitcoin ETF narrative. Because we know the SEC hates you. They don't want you to be safe. They don't want to protect you. They want to protect the status quo in Wall Street, which is kind of why I think BlackRock's going to get their Bitcoin ETF approved because they are the big player. DeFi investor pointing out, he says, it's hard to feel bullish right now. Retail interest in cryptos at yearly lows, top uh, total stablecoin market going down only. 99% of altcoins are slowly bleeding to death. The SEC likely to postpone the decision on ARK spot Bitcoin application. Good news barely impacts the market. Yeah, like PayPal yesterday, big news. Market did almost nothing. Crypto funding keeps decreasing. Volumes are super low, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He says, does this mean that you should sell everything? Not really. Maybe it's a good idea to trade less, focus more on long-term investments, refine your trading and investing skills and research new products to get ready for the next wave. And that's the thing I think I, I want to hit home here is that it's a very interesting time in markets right now, but it's a time when not a lot of people are paying attention. Everyone's kind of a bit over crypto to some extent. And I know if you're here watching this, you may not think that. But a lot of people do feel like that. A lot of people uh, are don't have the, the strength to go through, the psychological strength to go through the bear market, the FUD, the craziness. And they're going to say you just got lucky, as always. But you didn't just get lucky, you worked for it. Remember that. And while all these things, there's low volume and low interest, et cetera, et cetera, that just means it's a great time to accumulate. That's the reality of the situation. I'll tell you when it's not a great time to be buying. When the... Google search interest for Bitcoin and crypto or whatever your coin happens to be hits 100 again. That's a time to be saying, whoa, whoa, retail's here. The herd's arrived. The watering hole's getting pretty damn busy. Maybe I'm going to leave. Because that's the reality. Most people don't want to pay attention when prices are cheap. They only want to buy when prices are high. And most people in the market buy high and sell low. And that's why they lose. You're here now, you're paying attention, which means you probably have a pretty good chance that you're buying low and hopefully you're going to sell high. It's really just that simple.